Let me know when you're ready. White balance. You got it? All right, test, test, test. One, two. Good. That has to be the quickest setup in the history of action news. All right? Usually, action news is in the wrong place. You're fine. You just stay away from the message. I'll use it tomorrow. Yeah. If I get to know. I am? Guess what? I'm going to block my I'm not risking anything. Good morning. Uh, the entire city of Jacksonville continues to be under a tropical storm warning this morning. Ian is currently set to make landfall as a very strong category for hurricane on the southwest coast of Florida. It will then cross the state and is predicted to move northeast and toward our area. Yesterday, I declared a state of emergency for Duval County that takes effect at noon today. And at the same time, our emergency operations center will be activated. It's very difficult to determine the actual impact with storms of this magnitude. While we do not want to overreact, we also want to ensure we've done enough to prepare should this storm strengthen or shift as it approaches. Last night, I warned citizens in our areas that are most vulnerable to flooding and storm surge that they may be under a mandatory evacuation. 
At this time, I am not calling for mandatory evacuations in any of our zones. However, I am making a recommendation. If you live in zones A or B, or low-lying areas, and you flooded during Irma, or had issues of substantial damage and flooding during Hurricane Matthew, if I was in your situation, I would be making plans to move from those areas as this storm impacts us for a period of time. There is the potential for excessive rainfall, flooding, and power outages. I understand that leaving your homes is a difficult decision, but there's nothing more important than your safety. Again, I'm not calling for mandatory evacuations, but if you know that your home or property is at risk, low-lying areas, please consider leaving even if just for a short time during the duration of the storm. At this time, I am announcing the opening of additional shelters for those who need a safe place to shelter from the storm. Yesterday, we announced the Legend Center would open at 5 p.m. today. We are adding three more shelters to that list, La Villa Middle School, Landrum Middle School, and Atlantic Coast High School. Again, all four shelters will be open at 5 p.m. today. In addition, as of this morning, 630 City, our information line for the public will be open 24 hours a day throughout the duration of a storm. 630 City for information. If you're in an emergency, call 911. If you have not already done so, I encourage, I continue to urge you to take this time to secure loose items around your home, know your evacuation and flood zones, have your kit ready, and be prepared. Before we go to our stakeholders, I'd like to take a moment to send thoughts and prayers to those in Southwest Florida. As this storm moves closer to making landfall, they're enduring the devastating impacts of a catastrophic Category 4 storm. We have emergency response teams near those hardest hit areas ready to assist. Again, my thoughts and prayers are with you. I'd also like to take a moment um, to just say happy birthday to my daughter. She turned 16 today. Happy birthday, Brooke. With that, I will turn it over to Jay Stowe from JEA. I didn't know we were doing happy birthdays. So um, I want to start off by thanking the mayor and his team for the leadership through this um, and helping us to be able to make, make the best decisions that we can make. Uh, we are preparing for storms. We're preparing for a lot of wind. We're preparing for a lot of water. We've got professional team of people, 2,000 employees that are out uh, right now getting everything ready to be able to respond to the storms. We encourage you, as the mayor said, to take care of yourself, to plan, to have your hurricane kits ready. Um, and then as the storm hits, uh, once the winds die down, our crews will be out to repair and restore uh, service on the water side, on the electric side, in the call center, all the way across our system. We have mutual aid crews that are coming in from across the southeast, so you will see bucket trucks pouring in the next day in order for us to be prepared. Over 300 crews are coming in to help support us in this, uh, in this crisis. We, um, we expect that there will be outages. If there are outages, uh, we will look at shelters and hospitals and try to get the, the critical infrastructure back up online in our first phase of our Restoration 1, 2, 3. Um, you can go to our website to let us know about outages, uh, and then uh, you can call if you, if you need to let us know about outages, and we will respond as quickly as we can to get those out. Please be patient as we go through this process. Um, our emergency activate, we have activated our emergency operations center. It's fully activated, um, and we are as prepared as we can be, um, and we appreciate the support from all of the different groups within the city. Thank you. With that, we will uh, take questions. For many of us up here. Question for JEA, Jay. Um, during Irma, lift stations were a problem, and they even had to bring in backup generators and those type of things. What is done, what has been corrected, what can people expect on the water? And because we know we always hear electrical. Yeah, the, the, the water is also a concern. We have a team of people that are prepared for that, but we've been working since Irma to make improvements and be more resilient. Um, we have uh, almost 50% more generators and pumps, backup pumps that are in place than we had before, over 150 new ones that are in place. We are still concerned because as floods occur, then it will have impacts on the, uh, on the wastewater system and the lift stations, uh, and our crews have already started into the 12, they're on 24-hour um, watch right now, and will respond if there's uh, problems and concerns. Will there be any mandatory evacuations possible at all? Um, 
any, everything's always a possibility. Um, just kind of walk you through the decision making we've we've done historically, and we do in this storm. So you kind of back up your timeline. You look when the impacts are going to be here, and you look if you have to evacuate people. Um, given the current trajectory of the storm, when would you have to make that announcement? Uh, given where it was last night, when I said it was possible, uh, I believed based on, again, this is human judgment, but we have experience in this, that that would have been sometime this morning. The storm has shifted to the west. The predictions are that the shift continues that way and um, that we are prepared to handle its effects and potential flooding uh, in the state that we're in now. With this shift in the storm's track, how does that change the city's and JEA's response? I mean, does that change where you put crews? Does that change where you focus your resources? No, we still expect impacts. And again, I want to reiterate what I said. While we're not under a mandatory evacuation, if you are in a low-lying area, if you've been prone to flooding in Irma or Matthew, uh, heavy storm effects, we have shelters open. I would consider going to a shelter or I would consider going to another someone else's home that you know another part of the city. Uh, and no, our public works, our resources, all of our public safety personnel, in fact, you know, we sent teams yesterday to help uh, in other parts of the state. Uh, we have the personnel in Jacksonville to handle our business should we need to as well. Jay, yeah, Jay. Yeah, th th keep in mind, we have a, uh, we're proud to talk about the fact that we're the largest uh, city in the country and land area. It's a really big place. We've got crews in all areas uh, all the way east west north south and at the beaches and we are um, we've got people staged in all those different areas the track did not change until the track goes all the way away all, way way away we're not changing the way that we respond for the mayor there was the possibility of mandatory evacuations last night that has changed but there are more shelters open so your message to folks who live in duval county with this track shift is this a sigh of relief or do they still need to maintain vigilance they need to maintain vigilance um, look, it's a, it's a big deal to ask people to leave their homes. And when I've done it over the years, it's been with a lot of analysis and a lot of thought. Um, and given the shift in the trajectory, we believe we can handle uh, what's coming. Uh, however, if you have, if you're in a low-lying area or if you're in zone A or B and you've experienced flooding in Irma or Matthew, I would encourage you, you know your home, you know your property, I would encourage you to leave for a short period of time. I mean, we will recall um, while we did have evacuations in Irma uh, and we did predict flooding and we did predict um, uh, dangerous events, uh, no one was able to predict how bad that flooding was going to be. I mean, we did swift boat rescues of people. So it is weather uh, and unpredictable things can happen. So I say stay on guard and uh, stay aware, stay tuned to your local news uh, so you know uh, what's happening, what's coming. At what point would rescues cut off um, for people who may be in trouble? Chief. That would be a decision. It's a game time decision that we have to make, and it's based off of wind speeds and some other variables that are in there. But um, based off of what we're seeing right now, we don't see that it being, being something that we would have to face. But obviously, the safety of our crews is paramount. And so when the mayor suggested if you live in those areas that you consider relocating, uh, that's when we need people to take advice and take heed to what he's saying and relocate so that we don't have to make those you know rescues if necessary. And on that, I do need to mention that uh, remember, we have strong rip currents right now and uh, the water's rough. So I would ask that people stay out of that water and please don't force us into having to make rescues out there and tying up resources, making those unnecessary rescues when um, we could be using them in other areas of town. So please stay out of the water right now. Are you talking about the beach? Yes, ma'am. You know, I know we're talking a lot about this as an inland storm and flooding here. I don't see the beaches mayors here as well, but what are you anticipating? What are we going to, to, to see problems? And is this going to be a problem at the beach and the second part of that if you can go over the bridges again because that's something people are always wanting to know when might bridges shut down I'll let Nick yep. talk about the bridges and if you don't mind after we'll talk about the impacts okay so so as far as the bridges obviously we have plenty of bridges in Jacksonville and there's wind speed monitors on all those bridges so we have resources already pre-deployed for that so our, our intent is obviously to keep the commuters safe and we're going to stop traffic over those bridges if they exceed that you know the verbial uh, 40 miles an hour but we're not going to um, 
we're going to try to make sure that if we have evacuations and things of that nature, that's why we, you know, again, to reiterate what JFRD has said and what the mayor said, if you have to go, go sooner than later, because once those winds pick up and we have to shut those bridges down, it's for the safety of the commuters. We can't open them up until that wind is below that safe zone again for us. Okay. Can you, uh, can you repeat your question again? We've been talking a lot about the effects inland, what's going to happen with the river. But we haven't heard a lot about the beaches. What are you anticipating? So now that the track is going to be paralleling the coast, um, we are still anticipating surge three to five feet along the coast. Was what, that's what we initially forecast. That is going to be the continued forecast as of right now. Um, the, that surge level is under what we anticipate or what we expected during Matthew. Um, but there's potential still there to ramp up a little bit. So um, as far as the beaches, they're under the same threat as in surge as uh, the river right now. And I know we focused on the Irma flooding um, and the impacts in the river because it was so devastating. Um, and we anticipate a level near that um, for the river. And for the beaches, we don't an really anticipate the dunes to be like overwashed or anything like that with the surge currently. Um, so we are monitoring the trajectory offshore and if it tends to be a little bit further where the impact should be a little bit lesser in terms of surge but and vice versa if it stays a little bit closer to the coast we can anticipate uh, values potentially increasing can you give us a time frame of when we can start expecting to see this happen so the time frame right now is uh and pretty much through late thursday morning and then early thursday or thursday afternoon and then through the evening thursday and early friday uh, for JFRD, I mean, we're expecting very much something similar to Irma with regards to flooding. We saw five years ago people caught off guard, swift water rescues. Having that as a blueprint, knowing that this may be another situation, how, has, how have you guys tailored your response for potentially the same thing? So uh, we have our Urban Search and Rescue Florida Task Force 5, which is activated. It's uh, operating out of the Prime Osborne Convention Center. Embedded within that is a swift water rescue uh, attachment. And so we're ready uh, like, like we were back then. We're, we're ready and in that same posture. So if, if flooding does occur, we can make rescues in those areas. But again, to reinforce what the mayor said, if people that know they're in those flood pollen areas go ahead and move out, that leaves our resources free to make unexpected rescues. So we know that some of those areas are not gonna, we know they're gonna flood, so that's not unexpected. So please go ahead and take uh, take the advice and move to a safer location before we have to make the rescue. But did you guys bring in extra resources like more boats, more jet skis, watercraft, that kind of thing? So we've been, uh, we've been in a very blessed posture with this mayor and this city council. They have provided us all the resources that we need. We have the personnel and the equipment that we need. So we did not need to reach out to the state and ask for additional resources. Have you all started looking ahead to clean up? What is that going to look like for the city? Yeah, I mean, we're, we, we've done this before. We're prepared. Um, you know, in the event we need to activate debris pickup, we have contracts to do that. Uh, and then we obviously have our own personnel that's prepared as well. We've, uh, we've done a pretty good job of that over the years of getting things cleaned up and people back on the roads. And I, I would add the question about the beaches. Um, in making these decisions about evacuation or not evacuation, I am in regular communication with the beaches leadership and the beaches mayors, and um, we're all collaborating on this. So it's it's one city. We're all working for the safety of all of our citizens. Can you talk a little bit about the marinas that are out here? We haven't heard anything. Uh, have they been secured? I've noticed now on the St. John's River, all the shrimp boats have moved to inland. Uh, are there any problems, or what are you telling people to do that have boats? Secure them. <laughs> well, I mean, is there anything being done? I mean, private citizens, again, they're going to have to take care of their property, as I've talked about. You know, any, any asset that you have, um, we have a storm coming, and now is the time to secure it before, it makes, before it's here. Any more questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.